what uh, prompted you to write Lullabies for Lieutenants and how did you pick that title? It's kind of an interesting title. Well, I, um, I wanted to let people know what uh, one of the most seminal important moments of my life and the, and the lives of the people that I know that went to Vietnam. Um, I wanted them to know a little bit about what it's like. And so, basically, uh, and to honor the people that fought for our country during that war, that's why I wrote this book. Yeah. Um, the, um, the title, you know, a lullaby is a, is a, a soothing song sung. Uh, and um, a lullaby can also tell a story. And when I wrote this book, I sort of wanted to um, just to soothe my lieutenant friends feelings from some of the horrors of the war they'd experienced. And so, even though the stories themselves aren't lullabies by any means, uh, it made sense to me to, to give it that title. When did you go to the, through the basic school and when did you arrive in Vietnam? Just basic. I was in the basic school class of uh, uh, February 65 and uh, went to the artillery um, um, orientation school here in Quantico thereafter which was a three-week piecemeal mistake the Marine Corps was going through at the time. We didn't go to Fort Sill. Uh, and so we get direct orders to 3rd Marine Division to Okinawa after that. And uh, we are, uh, uh, Jack Swallows, who was in my basic school class and is in the book probably 10, 12 times, it was a forward observer with me out of Echo 212. That's where we were attached. We went there and then we shipped out uh, with BLT 29 and uh, deployed to uh, Red Beach, Da Nang, and we were the first units to go south of Da Nang. And Marines fought in that part of Quandam province for the next five, six years in the same villages, over and over. Yeah, the uh, writing of the book, why did you wait 43 years, or did you wait? It's been, it's been quite a long time. Well, since I came back from Vietnam. I needed to get a life. I wasn't going to be career military. I got out of the Marine Corps after three years. I came back. Nobody talked about Vietnam. So I just forgot about it. I put it out of my memory. Uh, while I was in Vietnam, I had taken notes about some, some of my experiences. Um, I had written scores of letters home to my mother. Um, and when I came home, I knew I'd been, been through something really important. So I grabbed the legal pad. And I wrote down on each line, on a couple of sheets of legal paper, one phrase that resembled either, that, that noted either an important person or an event or something I saw or something I knew about that I thought that particular phrase could end up being a chapter. So I put all that aside and forgot about it all. And then four years, I guess four years ago, I found uh, these letters, and Mother gave me all these letters that I'd written her from Vietnam, and I went through them, and I said, what an unbelievable experience. Uh, and, uh, and to this day, I'm proud that I ever got through PLC to be a Marine. I never thought I was, I never thought I was gonna make it through. And I still can't believe that I was a United States Marine officer. But anyway, so I start writing, I start writing the book, and um, I take uh, like one of these phrases and all of a sudden I write the chapter and it gets ex uh, embellished uh, with the letters and the knowledge that I've written on the mother uh, and then I decide that I need more uh, and I had taken a, a number of slides when I was in uh, Vietnam. I have, um, when I was a forward observer I had the, I, could, I threw it in my haversack and we'd go out on operations and I'd take pictures here and there uh, and I started looking at those and um, it really started coming back, and then I went uh, to um, to Marine um, to the powers that be and got the command chronologies of uh, two nine and 212 and went through S one, S two, S three, S four of each day, each action report of both my artillery and infantry components that I was involved with, and that's how I came up with all this information um, that was factual that that I didn't know. Um, um, I didn't know that when we went to Double Eagle that where we were, what the coordinates were. I didn't remember all that on these, these big operations we went on. So um, at the very end, I grabbed the slides and the slides that I went, I've selected some that I took to um, Wolf Camera. 
and I turned them into some bright glossy photographs and as I looked at them the smells and the sounds and the sights and the action and the drama just just covered my senses and that allowed me to put together the best chapter I think that I've ever written and that's chapter one in this book so that's that's how we came to write the book yeah. were there any I know you've talked about your historical research were there any dramatic dis surprises uh, that you don't re that you did not remember that really marked you it's, unbel it's, it's unbelievable how I, I think that when we're caught in the immediacy of combat I think that we just function and if we're trained like Marines are trained well then we're doing our job and um, so one of the things I noticed was uh, I was talking with uh, Dave Gardner recently uh, a good a retired Marine Colonel that was a forward observer with my battery uh, and he reminded me and I'd forgotten that each time I sent a fire mission in addition to the coordinates right near us where the where they were I had to shoot an azimuth in order to correct the fire and I'd totally forgotten that I ever used a compass in Vietnam interesting amazing too it is well, I thank you very much. I, we receive a lot of books here, Frank, and I, and uh, particularly Vietnam books now. And uh, when I got this one, uh, I took a look at it and put it aside, and then I thought, grabbed it one evening, and it's a great book. I really enjoyed reading it. So yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, hope it does well, I hope it does well for you. Simplify. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.